Hello and welcome to AM1's Thoughts Onward. Today I will be giving a brief overview of not one anime, but all the anime that I watched of the summer 2016 season. Now I will only be giving a very very brief summary of my thoughts on each and every one of them, because otherwise this would take a long time. And this list also only includes anime that have completed airing in this period, not anime that have started and are still continuing as the next season comes along. But I will be talking about them in no particular order. And I'll also be leaving a link to my my anime list in the description down below. That way you can check how I have rated each and every anime. And please do note that when I rate anime, I don't do an average of what I think the story and animation and sound and characters and everything is put together. I mainly rate them based on how much I enjoyed them. And I do actually do a 1 to 10 rating, not a 5 to 10, where 5 is basically the shittiest thing you'll find. Although 1 is also not something I actually use, because if something is so bad that it deserves a 1, I just put it to dropped, because I'm not gonna finish watching that shit. So it's basically a 2 to 10 system, where everything that I have completed has had something going for it that kept me watching, but once you get 5 and below, it's mostly a subjective taste. Now, on to the anime. First off, Real Life. Now this anime got all its episodes out in one go, and I decided, heck, why not just watch them all in one go, so I marathoned them all in one day. Not sure if it should have been watched like that, maybe I should have taken some more time for it. But all in all, I found it being a very good anime. Not like top notch, and it had some parts that still irks me. But basically, it's a high school life story with characters that I can actually believe, despite the setting of it being completely fictional and unrealistic. With which I mean just how the main character gets into the situation. It's interesting to see all these characters have all these different problems, all of which seem rather realistic and relatable. It has some humor and it has some darker sides, in a weird mix that I don't think you find much anymore. By which I mean it's done well. So I would give Real Life a watch. Next up, the big one for the season. The one that was from the creator of One Punch Man! Mob Psycho 100. Which was, for the first half of it, pretty much a disappointment. Like, the disappointment of the season. It was so hyped, and I, l I don't like basing myself off hype. I don't like going into something and going, Oh, this is hype, this must be good, and oh, this is hype, this should be excellent. What I like to do is go in blind and just figure out what it's like for myself. But being unable to miss the fact that it's from the creator of One Punch Man! It was basically impossible to have very high hopes for this anime. And for the first half, it really disappointed them. The second half was fairly epic, and it ended in a hilariously fun yet also epic way. But when people always come with the point that this is from the creator of One Punch Man, then it really doesn't stack up when you start comparing. It's worth watching, but do keep in mind that those first six episodes or so are not top notch. It's more of a coming of age story with psychic powers involved, you know, with all the standard issues of life. Now I did say real life was good because it had realistic characters and all these realistic struggles. Mob Psycho doesn't have that realism to it, even though it still tries to have these struggles of growing up. So you have been warned, but you should watch it. Next up, Orange. I don't get why the name, but apparently it's one of the highest ranked manga that there is, so the anime should be good. Well, unfortunately, it has one major flaw. The very basic reason for everything that happens has to do with letters sent from the future. Now, this question is left open for a while, and I can understand that. This was supposed to be a mystery I figured that would be cleared up in the last few episodes or something. And they did, and it was such a horrible explanation. No, you're grown up people, you don't do silly, childish, stupid stuff like that. Spoiler alert, but basically what three 27-ish year old people des decide to do is send letters out to sea in the Bermuda Triangle or somewhere where, hypothetically speaking, there are rumors of there being a time warp and they put their addresses and when the letters should be delivered onto the letter envelopes and somehow they get delivered to their houses ten years earlier. It's not a good way to explain that away, which drags the whole anime down. I like the characters, I like the struggles they go through, but I just can't accept that explanation! And due to that, you can watch it, but with that knowledge I'm just giving you, be careful. Next up, 91 Days. Perhaps my favorite anime of this season. It's in the running for the top spot, certainly. 
There's something about anime and mafia themes that just go along really well. I have no idea why, but it just does. 91 Days is this special anime about revenge and friendship. And it's not Naruto. And it gets more and more exciting every time, with cliffhangers, plot twists and such that don't ruin the story in any way, it seems. I would also recommend this one to be watched at a bit of an interval, because getting that excitement in between the episodes as well, not just watching through it in one go, as some people might do, might just make you enjoy it even more. However, the ending has a problem, because it's very open to interpretation. I myself am not sure what exactly happened there, but you should watch it. You really, really should. Next, Taboo Tattoo. It's what I consider a hidden gem of the season, though a lot of people seem to disagree. So it seems that this is a very subjective taste for me, but I just thought the action of it was great, the characters were great, it wasn't afraid to pull on a few heartstrings in the right moments, and while it did have plenty of fan service, it kept the fan service and the action separate. Unlike, let's say, Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale has this sort of thing where no matter what is going on, there's plenty of fan service as long as there's a girl involved. Taboo Tattoo had plenty of girls in them, plenty of them were well endowed. And as long as nothing important was happening, they could have fan service aplenty. But once the action got going, fan service was down. And they got serious. A little problem with this anime would again be an ending, which it was rather open ended, and there are indications that there might be a second season sometime. I'm not sure about that yet. I think they could have somehow completed it when they did, so maybe a little piece of bad storytelling there, who knows? Depends on what we perhaps get later. But for now, I would recommend watching it, but seeing as taste is subjective, this seems to just be one that I personally enjoy that most people maybe won't. Now we have Amama to Inazuma, or Sweetness and Lightning. Very simple, father is shit at cooking, daughter her always gets like these microwave foods. Father is a teacher and has the daughter of a chef in his class. Father learns to cook from her. Father, student and daughter all come together and eat good food in the end. It's as simple as that. It's a really cute anime that also perhaps showcases the struggles of being a lone parent and that desire to take care of them as best as you can. It can get a little bit repetitive and boring at times, but in the end it's just 12 episodes. And hey, if you're feeling hungry, you should watch it while you eat. Whether or not you actually want to watch it is up to your personal preferences. And now a new game which was a little bit disappointing. It was a slice of life moe and I expected the cuteness and the silly conversations and stuff. But it's supposed to take place at a game development company. And sure we get to see parts and bits of the development process, but we just don't get to see a lot of it. Mostly it's just the characters fooling around, like the norm in Slice of Life. So while charming by its own right, it doesn't really bring a lot of new things to a Slice of Life Moe show. So if you like Slice of Life Moe, watch it. If you don't like it, you should just avoid it. Now is Nejimaki Seire Senki, Tenkyo no Arderamin, perhaps more commonly known as Alderamin on the Sky. These two ended up being one of my top picks for anime of the season. Love the characters, love the setting, I have a fascination with the fantasy genre in general, so that just picks it up a lot for me, personally. And there's also this fact that this is not about who has the strongest warrior on this side. This is truly about tactical warfare on each side. And I love when a battle is more than who can erupt the biggest earthquake. I like tactics. I like seeing different powers being put to good use. I like seeing different technology being used to the best of their abilities. And they do that. And you never really know what they're thinking about until they've done it. Getting to see what they've thought of to defeat their enemy is always what I'm after here. Also, main character is one of my favorite characters of all time because I relate to him. Well, not the womanizing part, I am not much of a womanizer. I wonder why I am such a pretty face. But the laziness and the unwillingness to do anything unless he has to is something I relate to, and that probably speaks volumes about me. Now, it did end somewhat open and abruptly, and I am sorely hoping for a second season. But even if we get a second season, this seems to be the sort of anime that could potentially last for a long, long time, and might even have done better as a long-running anime. Who knows? I'm quite happy with what we got, but I want more. Next up, Rewrite. Now, this one wasn't really that good going through it. It was sort of average-ish. It's got supernatural elements to them, and some action and some superpowers, but it's just... It's not really done that well, I think. And up until the end, I just thought this is not really that good. Maybe I just shouldn't have watched it to begin with. And here comes the problem. Then comes the ending. And it's unlike anything I've ever seen. 
because rewrite seems to go for a genuine end of the world bad ending everybody dies end of story and i was sitting there watching those last scenes thinking okay how are they deus ex machina themselves out of this and it just didn't i was going wow they actually did a bad ending they did the everyone dies ending and that deserves credit i thought that deserves praise daring to do that is special so i was thinking of giving it a somewhat high rating until the last 30 freaking seconds after the ending theme. Now, Rewrite is based on a visual novel, and visual novels are known for having several routes you can pick. And what we get to see in those final 30 seconds are a visual representation of that storyline ending, but there are still other possibilities. And shortly follow, there is an announcement that, oh, you know what, there's gonna be more seasons of this. Yay! And I'm going, oh no, you did not just do I mean, sure, it might leave a bad taste in the creative enough to just end it on the bad ending, but I thought that was good. That was what gave it character in the end. Instead, they're going, well, this is just one possibility. Let's rewind and check what could potentially happen otherwise. Perhaps get a good ending. And that's just a facepalm moment. You ruined it. You ruined it. I'm a sucker for happy endings, but I thought it was praiseworthy to have a genuine bad ending there. And then you just go, oh, this is just one potential way for this to end badly. Let's show how this will end well. I mean, I know it's based on a visual novel, like I said, but come on, you don't have to rub it in our faces. Now, because I'm generally a completionist when it comes to watching anime, I will probably be watching that second season. However, for all you others, forget about rewrite, move along. Now we're talking about Servant. Servant isn't a hidden gem, but it's certainly better than I expected it to be. Now, vampires in anime is nothing new, and the seven deadly sins being represented in anime is nothing new either. And potentially, they've both been done together before as well. I am not that well versed in vampire anime, but I can't really put my finger on why, but I liked this anime. The themes of it, the conclusions they come to, and everything they do just seems different from what I've seen before. It seems new, refreshing. And I can only recommend people at least give it a try in order to try to find out for themselves whether they like it or not. Because I'm not really sure if I should be recommending it or not, to be honest. I like it, you may vary. Next up is... Oh, there's this is a long name. Kono Bijutsubu ni wa Mondai ga aru. Nailed it! It's also better known as Konobi, or in English, This Art Club Has a Problem. What are the better slice of life anime to have come out this season? Well, the character archetypes and all the settings are not exactly new, perhaps with the exception of the art club setting. This anime is enjoyable to watch, and if you're just looking for a quick laugh, I would recommend it. Slight issue with the last episode though, because it just went in a very cliche direction, and I called it long before they revealed anything. I watched the preview for the next episode, the, the episode before, and basically I figured out that Oh, that's not gonna be it, is it? And I was right! They just had to end it on such a stupid cliché! So that annoyed me, but I would still recommend watching it. Now I'll give a quick mention to Masogakun HXH, which I watched 3 minutes of and then stopped. It's got some people ranking it highly, but that's just because they want to see edgy anime. And as an edgy anime, probably very good. But that's not what I look for. I'm not usually on the lookout for edgy anime. If an anime has a good story and characters and it's just edgy on the side, then that's fine. One that is mainly supposed to be edgy isn't my thing. So like I said, I watched three minutes and stopped. It didn't really look interesting. Next up, Calidea Code, which is one of the disappointments of the season. It started strong, but then it got a convoluted story, the characters sort of fell out of whack, they didn't really seem relatable or good in any way, with the exception of one of them. And there were no big surprises or anything, with the exception of one, which ruined everything. So I would advise you to skip it. It has its moments, but not enough for me to actually recommend you watching it. Now, Arslan Senki Fujin Rambu, the second season of Arslan Senki, which was only 8 episodes. I am disappointed, I wanted more, and it ended on such a cliffhanger. I want more! And that's basically all you need to know. And by the way, go watch Arslan Senki. It's one of the best epic fantasy anime out there. Now, let's talk Amanchu. A very slow paced and at times boring, just downright boring anime. It has its cute moments and its funny moments, but in the end it just doesn't leave a lasting impression for me. Well, with the exception of how they sometimes decide to draw faces, which just go watch it and you'll understand what I mean. Watch the first episode and basically expect the rest of the series to be the same way, and that's how you decide whether you want to complete watching it or not. Hatsukoi Monster! <laughs> oh dear. 
perhaps the one I regret watching the most this season. Hatsukai Monster had an interesting premise, an interesting theme, and they went ahead and ruined it. They seemed to try to mix up the seriousness and the craziness of this anime in a very messy fashion. And when I was done watching it, all I could think was, this anime would be pretty good if they had focused on just the comedy aspect. Because the romance in there just it seems malplaced, it's just, it just doesn't fit in there. Give it a humor, it had brilliant moments of humor, but whenever they try to get serious and romantic, it just gets bad. It's a waste of potential for a good comedy anime. So avoid watching it and just move along. Now, Hitori no Shita, The Outcast. I'm not really sure what to say about this. It's alright at times, and other times it's just not alright. It hovers in this just okay zone all the time. Whether it's the action or the characters or, or the overall story or whatever, it's just overall okay. And it's not completed either, so it's open. I figured that one or two more seasons would perhaps complete it. But as for now, I don't think I'd really recommend people watching it. If there's more of it later and concludes better, then maybe I'll recommend it. Next up is a sports anime, Battery. Now when I first read the title, I thought this would have something to do with electricity. It didn't. Now a battery is the batter and the catcher in a game of baseball. And baseball is something that I figure you could make into an exciting thing. Like, anime can make any sport look good, okay? Let's just agree on that. That is not the case this time. Again, like with Mob Psycho, it's not really what it's advertised to be. It is a story of being an outsider, a story of being bullied, all these things that you associate with childhood. And I will give credit to the series for having somewhat realistic characters. But overall it has the same problem as Amanchu had many a times. It just becomes plain boring. Even when they play the sport, which should be the highlight, it just seems not that exciting. They're represented in a very realistic way, but this is anime, come on, blow it up a little out of proportion. So if you're really into sports anime, you could watch it, but maybe not the other one. Now next is Fate Kaleid Line of Prisma Ilia 3 Rai, or however you want to pronounce it. Now, when Fate Kaleid Line of Prisma Ilia first started airing, I thought it was really great. Unfortunately, by the time it's got to this point, it's gotten really shit. It's gotten boring. Even the epic parts just seem not that epic anymore. It's like they don't even try anymore. And there seems to still be more coming. And I will probably watch that, but for now, you could watch the first season of Fate Kaleid Line of Prisma Ilia. But you could also stop there. Watching anymore isn't really worth it. It just goes downhill. Now, Ange Virg... Ange Virg... Virg... I'm not sure how to pronounce that. What I do know is I dropped it. I watched one episode and dropped it. I figured maybe it has potential to be something good despite being an ecchi anime. But in the end, I just watched one episode and it was convenient beams of lights crossing various parts of the body, the anime. So I watched one episode and dropped it, and that's very much the lowest rating I can give. That's like me giving a 1 out of 10. I didn't give a 1 out of 10, because even if I don't rate it, if it's undropped, it's a 1 out of 10 in my book. Next up, ReZero, which continued from the previous season, and it was pretty much hailed as the return of good anime. Now, it's not bad. By no means is it bad. It has some interesting characters, it has an interesting setting, and some interesting story elements. The main problem with this anime, though, is its main character. Much like Kirito of Sword Art Online, Natsuki Subaru of ReZero is basically whatever character he is needed to be. But Natsuki Subaru is in a league of his own, even beyond Kirito. He can be smart, he can be brave, he can be resourceful. He can also be a weakling crying in a corner somewhere. It all depends on whatever the writers felt he needed to do at the time. Really, is he a genius or is he a numbskull? So when it comes to his character, I don't really feel like I can believe it, much less relate to it. Now worth mentioning is also the fact that some people say that we didn't really get anywhere with this anime and that pulls it down. And I can sort of agree with that, but I think that with this anime, rather than focus on where we got, we should focus on the ride we had, which was a good one. So definitely watch it and let's hope there's a second season soon. Now ReZero also has these short series following it. Both have episodes that are about two and a half minutes long, featuring the chibi versions of the characters of the main show. For the first half, they have break time. Break time usually just gives us a brief look at some humorous situations that happen off camera, so to say, in the main series. For the second half, they have Repetite, which puts all the characters in the real world and shenanigans and shit. Both of them are a bit fun to watch after each episode, but you shouldn't watch them by themselves. Though I hope that last part is obvious. 
Now, Android is another one that completed this season having come all the way from the previous season. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I like fantasy. A good fantasy makes me feel good. This was a bad fantasy. It never really made me feel any good. It didn't feel entertaining. The characters were cookie cutter at best. And while it tried to pull on heartstrings, it never really managed. It's a convoluted and messy plot with plot holes all the way. The characters are not spectacular. And even the animation makes me not like it. And I'm not the kind to usually notice the animation. I just watched this for fun, but I kept watching through it, and towards the end, it somehow picked itself up a little bit, but still not enough for me to recommend anyone watching it. Now, while I was watching it, I did find out that it's based on a game that will be published later. That game will have a different plot to it and different characters, but the same basic setting. So this anime has basically been a long commercial, and that might explain why it's so bad, because when I watch anime that actually feature games that exist in real life, usually the anime is bad. Speaking of which, Puzzle and Dragon Cross. I had hopes for this going into it, but it's obvious from the very first episode this is just a commercial for some mobile game. Even the way they fight is making it obvious. Oh, you have to line up these things to attack. Yeah, 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 that's a game mechanic we've seen a million times before. Move along. I watched a few episodes of it, hoping it would be interesting, but eventually I just put in a hole that I might just drop it outright. Because it didn't end after one season, and watching two seasons of that shit is too much. And finally, a bit of a weird one. Planetarian Chisana Hoshi no Yume. Or Planetarian, the red year of a little planet. Now seemingly set in a post-apocalyptic setting, a guy meets a robot who runs a planetarium. And this robot happens to look like a cute girl. And she seems to have a bit of a personality. Although that seems to also be attributed to the fact that she is not completely okay. It seems that some parts of her are broken. Now, I rated this anime 5 out of 10, middle of the tree, but that's basically because I had no idea where to put it. On the one hand, it could be a little bit boring and long-winded. On the other hand, it can be a really emotional and sad story, and bringing up themes like what makes someone alive. If you have an intelligent robot and a human being, what's really the difference there? It's just really heavy. Another reason it's weird is because the episodes are completely different lengths. Now that is probably because this is an original net animation, so it was supposed to be published on the internet and doesn't have to fit a schedule. But still, when one of the episodes is like 10 minutes long and another one is almost 30, that just seems weird. I go into it and I can't know how long the episode is gonna be. So it's a bit of a weird one. Maybe I'd recommend you watching it. I want to recommend you watching it, but I'm not really sure if that's a good idea. Whether or not you like this stuff is going to be very, very subjective, more so than normal. But check it out, see what you like about it. And that completes my video about the summer of 2016 anime season. Now, it's been a long video, but I hope you've gotten through it with a few recommendations and thoughts for what you should watch from the season that has passed. I hope you liked this video, give a like or dislike if you want, and please subscribe if you want to. And until my next video where I perhaps will take just one anime again because this takes a long time, remember that I have been Anime Mixer 1 and I approve of this video.